Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying your week so far. This week I read Zero to One by Peter Thiel and Blake Masters, and I wanted to spend the next few minutes to talk a bit about it. This book is about how to create a successful startup. But unlike traditional business models that tell us to create a minimum viable product and then to improve on it based on customer feedback, Zero to One tells us that in order to create an awesome business, we have to create something unique right from the start. First, we have to understand something that a lot of business owners fail to see, and that is how businesses fail. You see, when we look at different businesses that have achieved great success, they all did it in very different ways. But all businesses that fail have one thing in common, and that one thing is that they fail to escape competition. In other words, all successful companies are monopolies to some extent, which means they are so good at what they do that they have no competitors, or their competitors are so far behind that they seem to not exist at all. There are a few reasons why successful companies have to be monopolies. I won't get into all of them, but one of the biggest reasons is that since they have to spend all their time beating the competition, they can't really do anything else. Think of Google. They're so far ahead of the other search engines that they can focus on other areas that's not really search engine related. This extra time allowed them to create new things like Google Phones, Google Maps, Google Drive, etc. Coca-Cola on the other hand is also a big company, but they are constantly competing with Pepsi. They're still a successful company since they're one of the top two soft drink companies, but if they didn't have to worry about the competition, they can do a lot more. I haven't personally looked into Coca-Cola, so they could be on their way to create the next spaceship for all I know, but generally, when you have competitors, the majority of your time will be spent on competing, instead of experimenting with new ideas. So a startup's first priority, or maybe not first priority, but a major priority would be to escape from competition. They can do this by narrowing their market. So instead of being the best at everything, they can focus on one specific niche. For example, when Tesla first started, they didn't dominate the entire electric car market. Toyota already had the Prius and Nissan already had the Leaf. So what they did instead was focus on one specific area, electric sports cars, or electric supercars rather. They made the Tesla Roadster. Even though not a lot of people bought one since it was quite expensive, the people who did, did so because Tesla was the best at what they did. That allowed Tesla to later expand their market, so they created the Model S, which was a more affordable luxury car. At that point, Tesla had enough money to try to take on Toyota and Nissan in the general electric car market. Had Tesla not started with the electric supercar, they might not have had the same results. So now, we know that in order to build a great startup, we have to narrow our expertise to cater to a more narrow market. One very important thing to add, something that a lot of startup owners have trouble with is clearly defining what your market is. So let's say you own a vegetarian steak business and you make it sound like your market is very narrow, vegetarian steak. But in fact, the real market is vegetarian food in general, not vegetarian steak. Because you could be the only vegetarian steak restaurant in the area, but if people like vegetarian pies better, then you will have no business at all. So the real question is to ask yourself, what is the real market? And are you at the top of your specific market? That's all for today. I hope you learned something new. And as always, I hope you enjoyed it. And I want to take this next moment to thank you guys that have been watching every single one of my videos since day one. I know you're out there. I know you exist. And I wanted to take this moment to thank you and to show you my appreciation. And even if this is the second video you've seen of mine, it really, really means a lot to me. And I love you guys. So thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next week. See ya.